Welcome back to Learning Analytics Tools course. In this week, we'll continue diagnostic analytics. We will see uh, sequential pattern mining, differential sequence in mining, and process mining in this week. You might have noticed that first two, three weeks, we are talking about data collection, different environments, uh, how to collect data. That is to give you motivation, uh, what data to collect and what environment. Uh, from last week, we will be talking much of algorithms or the tools we can use to apply. So, whenever we give a demo of a tool, please try to explore with different algorithms what we are learning here. So, that will help you to understand uh, how these tools are used for education data. So, what is sequential pattern mining? Consider you have sequence of actions, say you have collected students behavior in a MOOC or in a tele uh, like a metal or some other environment or Moodle. So, you have a sequence of action students interacting with your system. So, student has to log into a system and they are doing sequence of actions say actions such as read, uh, uh, go and watch the video and answer the questions and each action is different. A student can read a page one, again he can read the another page. It is not the same page he is reading, it is not continuing the same page, but he is reading another action. So, read can continue by the another read action, but each read is different, it is not on the same context, the context is varies. So, let us consider that as a two actions, read contest 1, read contest 2. We can talk about how to merge everything later, but let us consider that each action is different. So, you need to identify the unique set of actions. In the last week, we saw that in a metal, we classified the group, the action into six or seven sets, right? So, like a functional model planning, qualitative model, quantitative model, like that you need to come up with a unique set of actions. In a MOOC, it is simple, you know, in MOOC, we have only few set of actions possible, like a read, watch video, uh, interact with forum, or uh, answer the questions, assignments. So, those kind of simple set of actions. So, let us create such a set of actions, the unique set of actions arrange it in a sequential manner as it appeared based on the timestamp you captured. Example action sequence is here. Um, for example, this is uh, in a uh, MOOC, uh, a student is actually watching a video. After watching the video is adding some post. So, the student is adding, uh, going to the comment, uh, the forums and adding a new post or is going to upload someone's already uh, added post and he is reading a PDF, um, we do not know what is he reading, it might be in the context of information. Let us see the action is reading, then he is taking quiz, uh, we do not know the which question he answered, what is the response, let us see he is in a quiz, he is just looking at the page. Again reading, again watch video, instead of watch video, we can say it is video only, video, add post, quiz, read, upload, read, he is doing uh, this kind of sequence of actions. Please understand this sequence of actions clearly, a student enters. Uh, to the MOOC and watches a video, after that he is adding a post and uploading, then he goes back to some other page where he is reading. The navigation is not given, but navigations can be understood indirectly from this kind of uh, sequence of actions. He is reading a new uh, page in a uh, online resource you provided, reading particular page PDF. After that, he again going back to quiz to answer some question, but he is not able to answer, going back read again is not able to understand that, you might be watching the video to understand, still not understood, go and add a post saying that that particular question is not discussed in the class or something. So, then he posting it, again going to quiz and trying to understand, read, upload, there might be something he was looking for in the forum, then again read. So, these are set of sequence of actions a person is doing in a MOOC, consider that. How do you say sequence is based on the timestamp we captured. But how long a student was watching the video, how much time he spent on uh, like uh, reading the PDF or how many questions he answered in quiz, that is not captured here. Let us consider uh, just the sequence of action, this will capture the frequency, right. In last uh, week we saw just the process model, right, just this transition between each action. So now we are considering the frequency, consider that. Um, we will consider the frequency in pattern mining. So, what are the patterns we might have from this? Uh, watch video, add post. So, see this has repeated twice. So, this is interesting, right? So, this there is an action a student do twice. It happened twice. 
the sub sequence of actions occurred twice. Upvote and read, um, upvote and read. Yeah, this action, this sequence of action also appeared twice, like two actions. Quiz and read. Yes, here and here. Right? This also appeared twice. Uh, there might be other actions which might be appearing twice because I did not check idly, but let us see. Um, read and upvote is not. Okay, there are a lot of combinations can be possible, but consider that only these set of actions occurred twice. Other sequences have occurred only once, right? So the patterns from this particular um, set of sequence of actions from one student can be these three patterns possible: like watch video, add post, upvote read, quiz read. This occurred twice. Okay. Let's do a small activity. Um, the sequence of actions, your example sequence of actions given from last slide, and there are three students' actions. You have to find a patterns. So, the three students actions, uh, sequence of actions given here, uh, when they interact with the MOOC, uh, you try to find out the patterns in this three sequence of actions. Uh, please assume the video after you find out the patterns, uh, please pass the video, try to really find out the sequence of actions. We will discuss few of them. So, let us look at the three uh, sequ students sequence of actions uh, S1, S2, S3 and uh, our aim is to identify uh, which action sequence occurred on which students. So, instead we try to create this kind of table, let us see this is a table and uh, I will explain this table in a minute. Um, let us see V is video, okay, watching video, Q is for quiz. Okay. How many times a uh, sequence of action, a pattern, a video uh, followed by a quiz action? Video followed by a quiz action occurred once for the student 1. This is student 1, this is student 2, this is student 3 in this hyphen. Understand that the uh, notation we are using. So, video followed by quiz occurred once for student 1 and uh, after that, uh, no, no for student only once. Here it occurred, it did not it did not happen, this pattern did not occur for student 2, and this pattern occurred for student 3 video quiz. Okay. So one, one time for student 1 and one time for student 3, 0 time for student. So 1, 0, 1, that is the uh, meaning. Out of 3 students, this pattern occurred for 2 students. How many students have this particular pattern? Two students, because one, two, two students have it. Okay, you understand this value two. And there's a pattern uh, occurred for student one. This pattern did not occur for student two, and this pattern occurred for student three, one times each. Okay. Let's look at the second pattern, video uh, followed by video. Um, video followed by video uh, did not occur for student 1, but it occurred for not to student 2 also, then it occurred for student 3. So, this is the student 3, test 1, it is 0 for student 2, 1 and 2. So, this is S1, S2, this is S3, it occurred only once. Out of 3 students, only 1 student had this particular pattern. Uh, the pattern can be uh, not just uh, uh, two action sequence, it can be three also, it can be four also, it depends on how much complexity you want to use. Um, if you can make a sense of four action in a sequence and that makes some inference for your hypothesis, please use that. But let us say it is three uh, sequence of actions can be considered here, uh, video, quiz and read, video, quiz and read, video, uh, video quiz and it is not here and video quiz and it is here. So, 1, uh, 0, 1. So, which means this particular set uh, sequence of actions, um, this sequence of action actually uh, what is actually happening in this particular sequence. Whenever students watching a video taking quiz is immediately going back to read. So, this is important compared to this. So, we can say hey, this action is not much, this is what we are going to come consider. 
So, it occurred for S1, S3, not for X2 and it occurred for two students, right? That is what it is given. So, it is again video uh, lead quiz, it is basically this. It occurred once here, zero time here and video lead quiz, okay? That is the idea. Similarly, you can compute for the others, other uh, sequence of actions. Here the idea is, um, for example, I will show you some fact actions which might occur twice from so read 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 occurred once for student one, not none for student two and student three. But is this is a pattern, right? It occurred only once once for student one. And uh, read uh, read quiz one two three so read quiz Some quiz read the read quiz occurred everyone like one 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 and all three students have it only one student have it here this is how many students. Okay, so lead quiz might be more, um, I am not sure one, okay. So let us consider this two, two set of actions, there the are few more patterns as possible from it. So the pattern can be a same action repeating, okay. It is a unary action can be uh, repeating multiple times can be pattern. A student is reading, 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 it is also a pattern, he spends a lot of time, it is probably strategy for him. Or reading and taking quiz occurring in a loop that also pattern as uh, the student is reading immediately taking quiz reading and taking quiz or uh, some student do not read anything they just uh, take quiz and watch videos quiz and watch videos it might be also pattern okay. So that is that is what we try to identify. I gave you example of few patterns that can be identified from the three students and I want you to create this such a kind of table to understand uh, this pattern occurred not to student 1 and 2 only to student 3, it occurred 1 to only one student. For example, here uh, this quiz to read pattern occurred student 1 once, student 2 uh, once, student 3 twice. So quiz and read occurred twice to student 3 here, also the year. So, but it occurred to all three students, three, it is not sum of this number. You might think it is just a simple sum of this number, no, it is just to, how many students it had is like the three students that is only all three students had this particular pattern. It might have occurred in different frequency among different students, okay, that is you have to understand. There is two differences. Identifying pattern occurred on student 1, student 2, student 3 and identifying frequencies this tape, this particular column. This column says whether how many students have this pattern, one student, two student or three student. So just to differentiate I added this particular pattern here. Okay, hope you understood this table. It is very important to understand this table uh, to go further. So, you, if you understood this table, um, let us see two metrics. Uh, sequential pattern mining has only two metrics, okay. We have to understand these two metrics, uh, that is very basics. It is enough to understand the sequential pattern mining and talk and uh, explore and do analysis on it. One is sequence support, uh, that is S support, we call it as S support that captures number of individual action sequences for a group where that sequence of actions occurred at least once. I um, will just bit you just a minute. Um, what it says is uh, number of individual action sequence occurred for a group where that sequence of actions occurred at least once. That simply tells how many students have it. That is what has support, sequence support. This says number of this action sequence occurred to a group of students, like two students have that. At least once it have occurred, not, it does not matter how many times it occurred, at least once. So here it is 3, 2, 1, this is basically yes support, in this particular column, okay. Let us look at the high support, instance support. It is defined as number of times the pattern occurs within the action sequence for an individual in a particular group. Uh, the group is 3 students, right, out of 3 students. For each student, how many times the particular pattern, um, the pattern occurs within action sequence for an individual. 
this is what this I support like a 1, 2, a 1, 1 and 2 ok. This is what I support means. I support tries to capture how many times the particular pattern occurred for an individual in a group. The particular group is 3 students here. For this group uh, all 3 students uh, how many times each pattern occurred 1, 1, 2 this is called I support. These two are very key and important matrices for uh, SPM sequential pattern mining. Only these two key uh, uh, matrix is enough to understand the sequential pattern mining. So, let us compute uh, I support uh, and uh, S support for this particular table. Let us take um, uh, from the I support, this is I support, from the I support we can compute I, I frequency mean or I frequency standard deviation. I frequency mean is basically uh, finding the average of that uh, sequence of actions. For quiz to read, uh, let us take quiz to read, it occurred once, uh, one and two, I two times for student three. So, if you add all the numbers therefore, divided by how many students it occurred, uh, 3 students, so 1.33. So, mean of this particular pattern is 1.33. Uh, if you have a lot of students say uh, 10 students or 60 students, your actions computed, you can compute mean, median, also the standard deviation, right. So, if the mean is too far away from standard deviation, it is best to capture median, okay. Just, uh, uh, telling you that uh, you can use median instead of mean. But I frequency mean means this value, I frequency median is a another measure you can compute. And uh, for a S support, uh, all 3 students have that particular uh, particular pattern. So, 3, three by 3 is 1, so S support is 1, okay? uh, understand this. In this video, we introduced what is sequential pattern mining, we will talk uh, some examples in the next video. Thank you.